Hello everyone. Welcome to another Garden City Arts online program. Today we are painting this really pretty little mermaid painting that you see in the top left corner of your screen. And if you have uh, a kit from Garden City Arts, then all of your colors are already mixed and ready to go. All you need to do is take those colors out of the container and lay them out onto your palette. And you wanna do it in the order that I have them laid out right here, okay? So this is the order that we need them to complete this painting. Remember, when we're painting this, if you are behind, you can pause the video. If you're going super speedy and ready to move forward already, then you can fast forward, okay? So remember, you can do whatever you need um, as you paint this video. Uh, if you do not have the art kit, you could pause this video right now and mix up all of the colors that you see here on the palette, or you can make your own. This is your painting after all. Okay, friends, let's go ahead and get started. We actually don't need our paint at all to begin with. Instead, we need our piece of chalk. So I'm going to grab my chalk and I'm going to start drawing out my mermaid tail. Now, very first thing that you want to do, you're going to put a point and this point is where the her well basically where her body meets those beautiful little fins that come off and that kind of look like her feet or what we would consider feet okay so the very first thing i'm going to do is put a dot now if i put it too high then uh, it's going to look a little weird i want to put the dot right about where i have my original painting and that's going to be not in the middle, but just a little bit off and to a little bit below and off to the right. So I'm going to put a little dot right there. Okay. That's my very first step. Next, I'm going to take my chalk and I'm going to start at the dot and do a big, huge curving line. It's going to kind of look like a fish hook. Okay. And then curve it up and off my canvas up to the top. Next, I'm going to do kind of the same thing, but I'm not gonna go to the top, I'm gonna go off to the side. So this is her body that we're drawing right now, okay? Now, if you feel like that doesn't look quite right, mine's a little off, you can make adjustments. So I'm going to make the hook a little bit bigger so that she has a bit more body, and I'm gonna bring this off a little bit more. That way, she's not such a skinny mermaid. Now, if you make a mistake, you can take a clean, damp brush and you can erase the chalk. That's why we're using chalk today because it's a much better tool for drawing when you are going to be painting something than a pencil. So make sure you wash off all that extra chalk. If you made a mistake like I did, if you need to keep adjusting, you can. And then once you're done with the body, let's add some fins. Now, the fins look kind of like footballs, right? They're pointed at the uh, bottom and at the top. And then they come out and get really round in the middle. We want to do that for her fins. So I'm going to put a little dot where I want my fins to end, the tips of the fin. And I know that the other tip is going to touch her body. That way she doesn't have floating fins. Now, this can go off your canvas. That's absolutely fine. I'm going to start at the point. I'm going to come out, do a really nice big curvy line, and I'm going to bring it back to her body. I'm going to do the exact same thing, and I'm going to actually bring her fin down here. So remember, you can adjust as you go. You can erase. Sometimes you think something's a good idea, and then you look at it, and you're like, oh, oh, no, no, that's not right. And that's kind of what's happening with me today. So, you know, everybody has their off days with uh, painting and drawing, and that's okay. Just try, try again until you're happy with it. Okay. So, her fins kind of come down off to the side of her body. And her body comes up in between those fins. So, when you are good to go, we will move on. All right, I have my mermaid's body and fins drawn out. 
I'm good to go. Remember, you can pause the video if you're not. You can keep drawing. You can erase, start again, okay? Whatever you need. Now, when you're ready to move on, we're going to start painting. We're gonna leave the fins alone for now. The first color we're going to use is this dark purple, and that is for the body, okay? So, let's talk about brushes really fast before we start painting. You'll want some kind of a big flat brush. Doesn't have to look like mine, just whatever. I have a half inch uh, wash brush. Um, you need some kind of shader brush probably. You could get away with not having this if you don't have one, that's okay. Um, a shader, I have a four, but you could go all the way up to like an eight, okay? The bigger the number, the bigger the brush. And then you need a round brush and it looks kind of like a pencil, has a point to it. And I'm using a number four, but really any kind of round brush will work just fine. Okay, so now we know our brushes and what color we're gonna use, let's start painting. Okay, so. Very first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to outline her body first and then fill it in. It's up to you what brush you use. If you're an experienced painter, you could probably use a bigger brush, but it's gonna be harder to control. So what I would suggest is using either your round brush or your shader brush. Now, we're gonna use the top edge of the brush, whichever brush we use, and before we use it, we want to prime the brush. To do that, we dip it in paint water and then we pat them dry on a paper towel. This makes our brush nice and cool and damp, but you wanna make sure you don't have extra water and it doesn't drip on your hand. If it does, pat it on your paper towel again, okay? Once your brush is nice and cool and damp, you're ready to get started. I'm gonna show you the round brush and sometimes you have to mix a little bit of water into your paint. Okay, do you see how I dip my paintbrush in water? And then I mix that water into the paint, kind of off to the side of the pile. Not in the center, but off to the side. Now, you wanna be careful not to get too much paint on your brush, okay? Um, if it's a huge glob, you might have to swirl, tap, and dry your brush and start again. Now, I'm gonna use the top edge of my brush and I'm going to outline. You'll notice that that chalk really dries out your paint. So sometimes you do have to go back and grab some more paint. And I'm using my brush. Um, I'm not using the side of it. I'm using the top edge of it and I'm pressing lightly. I'm gonna show you something really fast. If you press light, it's gonna make a light line. If you press hard, do you see how it's bending the brush over? It's gonna make a really big line, okay? So you want, and you can practice that too if you want to with me. So if you want a thin line, Light as a feather, barely bend that brush over. If you want a thick line, you push harder, okay? So I'm going to quickly outline the rest of my mermaid. Now, if you don't like the round brush, I am not a fan of it. You can use the shader brush and I'm gonna show you how to do that. If you're good with your round brush, just keep painting and you can ignore me. Okay, so the shader brush I got just enough on the top edge of the brush. I don't wanna have a huge glob. And I use the very top edge, okay? So again, top edge of the brush, not the side. And I don't turn it to its thickest, I turn it to its thinnest, okay? And that helps make a really nice line. Now, I gotta grab some more paint. If you notice that your paint is really light and kind of dry and scratchy, that could mean you need more water in your paint could also just mean that you need more paint on your brush. Remember, your brush runs out of paint. You gotta reload your brush. And also remember that it's gonna act differently when you go over the chalk than it is if you go over bare canvas. Okay, chalk dries it out. It's really dusty, okay? All right. So I have my outline. Make sure your outline is nice and clean. You don't want scratchy lines. And remember, if your paint is dry and scratchy, mix more water into your paint, okay? Now, your mermaid technically doesn't stop at the edge of the canvas. She technically goes all the way off the sides. So if you want to continue painting on the sides, you can. I'm probably not going to for this video, but you definitely can. So, once you have, <coughs> bless me, I'm so sorry. Once you have 
the outline of your mermaid done, you can switch to a bigger brush because look at all that area you have. You can switch to a bigger brush and fill in your mermaid. Now, you wanna be careful because if you add too much water when you're doing this step, it can be very light and transparent. You can always add a second coat, but it's easier just to do it heavier the first time. So I'm going to grab my paint and you notice I turned my uh, mermaid onto her side. That's okay. What I'm doing is I'm starting at the edge and do you see how I'm pulling the paint inwards? That is the best thing you can do along those edges because that keeps your mermaid the size you want her. If you go outside your lines, she's gonna maybe have like a weird little knob, okay? Or she's gonna have to get bigger because you went thicker right there, okay? So start at that line and bring it in. Try to stay inside your lines as best you can. I'm gonna do that on both sides. Remember, you want thicker paint on this step, not adding too much water. Water makes your paint more transparent, so it'll make it more see-through. And we want the paint to be nice and thick. We want her to be solid. Although, if she has a little bit of blue showing through, that's just gonna make her look more magical. You're good, no stress. Okay, so I have my edges done. So now that I have my edges done, I can change it up. I can start at the top edge, and I'm gonna use the thick, flat edge of my brush to fill in space. And I'm going to bring it all the way down to her tail. Be careful if your brush is really big, you might have to turn it to its thinnest point when you get to her tail. That way you don't go outside your lines. Remember, if you are doing this, you can paint those edges. And the reason I'm doing this long brush stroke is because do you notice how it looks a lot better than if I had done little short choppy ones? You can see the paintbrush strokes go all the way from the top all the way down to her tail. Okay, once you have her filled in and you are happy with your mermaid, you can swirl tap and dry your brush. Okay, now next step is to do her fins. Now, we're gonna make those yellow. Before we can make them yellow, we have to do a white base because I don't know if you know this, but yellow and blue make green. And yellow is really transparent, you can see through it. So if we put just yellow on top of the blue, it would look a little like green yellow and not bright yellow. So what we're going to do is outline once again. So grab your favorite brush, whether it's the shader or the round brush, and you might have to mix a little bit of water into your paint. Remember, when you mix water into your paint, you mix it in the side, on the side of the pile, not in the middle. And then I'm going to outline. So I'm gonna go right next to her tail. I'm gonna follow my chalk lines. And then I can fill in in a moment. Sorry if you hear my crazy dogs in the background. I am working from home today and they can be kind of loud sometimes. So outline first and then you fill in. Remember when you're outlining, you use the top edge of the brush. When you are done outlining, you can use the side of the brush and turn it to its fullest point and it fills in a lot faster. Do you see that? Now, you'll notice that I'm not following my chalk lines exactly. That's because I'm kind of making decisions as I go and changing it up a little bit. If you feel like you didn't like what you did with the chalk lines before and you want to change it up, it's your painting. You can. It's the great thing about being an artist. You get to make lots of cool decisions like this. Okay, so once you have your fins painted in, let's swirl, tap and dry that brush really fast. 
Now you have brushes at home and you wanna take good care of them, just like we have to take good care of ours at the gallery. So we swirl it in the paint water, we tap it on the side of the can, and then we pat it dry. Swirl, tap, and dry makes a clean, happy brush that will do a really good job for you. So we have our fins painted in white and we have our purple body all finished. Now we're going to paint the scales on our mermaid next. I'm gonna show you how to do the scale pattern. Remember, this is your painting. So if you don't like the scale pattern that I did in the original, that's okay. You could do hearts and do it in, like make it into a polka dot pattern. You could do stars. You could do a combination of all of those things, okay? You could add your own touches. This is your painting, you could have fun. Now, I notice that my paint is not completely dry in all areas. So I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit. You might have to let yours dry a little bit as well. And then I'm gonna show you, while we're waiting for paint to dry, how to do the scallop pattern on the palette right here. So the scallop pattern or scale pattern is basically just a whole bunch of little bowls and those little bowls touch. So I'm using my round brush and I'm mixing a little bit of water into my paintbrush. We've already talked a little bit about how the more pressure you put on your brush, the bigger the line is gonna be. So remember, press light as a feather and you're gonna make a little bowl. Okay, now you have the trick to the scallop pattern is that you make the same or about the same size bowl right next to it, okay? And you just continue doing that all the way across. Do you notice how the scallop pattern right now looks kind of like waves in the ocean? It's kind of fun, huh? Now you know how to do waves too. Now, here's the trick. That was the first line or the first row. The second row should get a little bit smaller, okay? And it starts right in the middle of one bowl and ends in the middle of the next bowl. So we go all the way over. Ooh, I got a little off. So sometimes you make mistakes and that's okay. Now, if your mermaid looks like this, as you go off your mermaid's body, you do just half a bowl, okay? It's a really easy, simple solution. So I'm just gonna continue going all the way down. Now, you wanna try to get smaller as you go. Sometimes you can't because the row before was a little too big, that's okay. Maybe you start adding like an extra scallop. And do you see how I just go all the way down until I'm at her tail fin? And then maybe you start running out of space. So your scallops have to get smaller and smaller and smaller and maybe they're not always perfect. That's okay, okay, no stress. Now, if you need to, you could draw that in chalk. If you draw this in chalk, you have to make sure that your surface is completely dry. Mine is not. Do you see how some paint came off my finger? You can usually tell if paint is dry by how shiny it is. If it dries solid and there's no sheen or shine to the paint, it doesn't look glossy, then you're good. It's dry. If there's a shine, like uh, it looks kind of wet, it's still wet. Okay, so because mine is wet, I'm not going to draw it before. I'm just going to freehand it. Now remember, you can do anything you want. You could do hearts instead, okay? You could do stars, you could do anything you want. Whatever you think is creative and fun and you enjoy. I'm gonna put in my scallop pattern. It might take a few tries to get the hang of it, okay? I'm gonna show you really fast. Let's say I make a mistake. Oh, I went down instead of up. Oh no, my painting's ruined. It's not, no worries. You take a clean, damp brush, okay? It has to be damp. If it's too wet, it's gonna cause problems. And you go back and forth and you can scratch at the paint and look how it lifts it up, okay? You have to be careful though because it can sometimes lift up the paint underneath too. So you don't wanna do that too much. This is kind of only an emergency move, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go off my mermaid and I'm just gonna keep doing my scallop pattern all the way down. I'm going to speed up the video a little bit here. Okay, I'm gonna speed it up in just one moment. Um, 
you can speed up the video as well, or you can pause it if you are taking your time and drawing scallops like I am, or scales. All right, we're gonna speed up now. Okay, I'm gonna stop the video right there and you'll have noticed that as I come down, I start curving my scalp. So they're no longer straight, but they start to kind of curve. And you'll also notice it gets kind of jumbled in here, right? It's difficult to see like the each individual scallop or scale like it is up here. That's okay because it gets smaller and it's less detailed. It's okay to have things look a little bit different in different areas, no stress, okay? And if you made a huge mistake, no worries. We'll put some seaweed on it and no one will know. Okay, friends, so we're done with our scallops. We can now move on to our yellow fins because they're dry now. Um, we took quite a while doing our detail for our mermaid, didn't we? So now we can move on to the yellow. So what I'm doing is I am mixing some water into my yellow and I'm doing it just off to the side, just like before. And then I'm using my shader brush, but you could use a round brush, that's absolutely okay. And I'm going over my white. So by putting that white layer down first, do you see how bright it is now? It's a lot more vibrant. Now here's the cool thing. This is your painting, so you could make some adjustments if you want to. You do not want to mix the yellow and the purple together because yellow and purple are complementary colors and they will make mud if you mix them together. But you could add some white back into your yellow if you wanna add highlights, okay? So I'm gonna put first a nice healthy layer of yellow down on my fin and then anywhere where I maybe didn't get enough white on the first go around, I can grab some white and put it back on and do you notice how when I put the wet white paint on top of the wet yellow paint and move them back and forth, they kind of start to blend. It's pretty cool. So if you want that blended look, then you need to make sure that both colors are nice and wet and you go back and forth with your brush. You move the white into the yellow, maybe the yellow into the white. And remember, if the yellow takes over, add some more white. If the white takes over, add more yellow, okay? No stress. All right, once you get your fins how you want them, we can move on. And remember, if you go outside, if you make a mistake, okay? I went outside my white area, so what I can do is take my brush and I can erase it. This is how you'll get rid of your chalk lines too at the very end, but you wanna make sure everything's dry before you do that because you can make a mess by hitting a wet area of paint and streaking it everywhere. When you're finished, swirl, tap, and dry your brush. You might have to do that a few times. And then you're ready to move on. So, all we have left to do is the background and the seaweed. The background is super easy, okay? And it's up to you how much or how little you do. We're using just straight cerulean blue, 
and we're adding a whole bunch of water into it. And I want you to grab your biggest brush that you have. Again, it doesn't have to be the same size as mine. Whatever you have is just fine and you can make it work. Now, do you notice how I'm putting a whole bunch of water into it? So I'm dipping my brush into the paint water and I'm mixing that water into the paint and I'm making my paint really watery. That's because the more water you add, the more transparent it looks. And we're going to go into the background and we're gonna put some little streaks of blue into the background. Now, we wanna be careful not to go into our mermaid's body. So we kind of go around our mermaid. And by doing that, it'll make it look like all of these details are going behind the mermaid. If you want, you can grab extra blue, um, maybe like a heavier chunk of not watered down blue and put it on top and make it darker in that area. Okay, so I'm doing big brush strokes. I'm using the biggest edge of my brush and I am going up and down. Okay, that's important. You wanna go up and down, fill in space, go right up to your mermaid, but try not to go into your mermaid. Now the paint is pretty transparent, so if you do make a mistake and go into your mermaid, there's a chance that it won't show up. If you get into the yellow, it might. But remember, you can paint covers paint. You can always cover it up. Oh, see, I got into my fin. So what I'm gonna do is probably just do a touch up here in a second. Once I'm happy with the background, I can move on to my seaweed and or to our seaweed. And I'm gonna show you how to do that seaweed in just one second. So swirl tap and dry your brush. And you'll need your round brush. Now the seaweed, we have a dark green and we have a light green. We're gonna start with the dark green and the dark green is gonna be the seaweed that's farther back. And the dark green, it can go on across and uh, cut into your mermaid's body, but the dark green is going to be the seaweed farthest from us. It can be really short seaweed or it can be really tall, big seaweed that's really thick in the background, okay? After we've done a few dark seaweeds, and do you see how it's just a whole series of waving back and forth? It's like a wiggly line. After we've done a few dark green seaweeds, then we can take the light green seaweed and we can put the light green in front of the dark green. And the light green will look like seaweed that is closer to us. So the darker it is, the more likely it is further away from us. And the lighter it is, the closer it is to us. And do you see how I'm overlapping my seaweed? And overla overlapping basically means it crisscrosses. It cuts in front of something that we've done before. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like on my canvas. And you all can do as much seaweed or as little seaweed as you want. I'm gonna start with some baby seaweed down on the bottom. It's really little. Then I can do some bigger ones. Now, one thing I want you to think about is variety. Okay. You want some tall and you want some short. You want some close together and you want some spread apart. You do not want it to be a pattern. So I don't want it to be seaweed, space, seaweed, space, seaweed. Do you see how that doesn't look quite as good as the variety I have on this side? If you end up having seaweed, space, seaweed and you don't like it, that's okay. There's an easy fix to that. So what you do is you just put in some more seaweed to break up the pattern make some a little bit taller and keep the others short and maybe make this guy really thick and, and, and big. Okay, remember you want some of that seaweed to crisscross in front of your mermaid. You can also have some of it go behind your mermaid. If it goes behind your mermaid, what happens is that it will stop. In fact, I'm gonna erase this because I want it to be behind my mermaid. It will stop where the mermaid starts and then it'll pick back up 
where she ends. So do you see how my seaweed started at the bottom and then it came up, went behind, and then started again once it was behind her. I mean, once we were, we were past her, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so I think I'm just about done with my green, my dark green. Now I can swirl tap and dry and I'm gonna do light green. And the light green seaweed, I want that to be in front of her because it's closer to us. And I'm gonna crisscross some of my other seaweed as well. Now here's the cool thing, you have yellow and blue. So if you wanna make some green a little bit darker and some green a little bit lighter, you can. To make it lighter, you mix yellow into it. To make it darker, you mix blue into it, okay? Now, I'm gonna speed up the video just a little bit. I'm gonna add a lot more seaweed, and then at the very end of the seaweed, we'll talk about all the things you need to do to finish your painting up. Okay, I'm gonna speed up. Okay, we're gonna stop there. I think I have enough seaweed. So, a few things you wanna check. Make sure all your seaweed goes all the way off the bottom of your canvas. Um, make sure that you, when you're ready and when everything's dry, that you go back in and erase any of the chalk that's left over, okay? There'll be little tiny bits of chalk that might pop up where you didn't cover it up. If you need to do touch-ups like I do, for instance, on my fin, where I took some of the blue and went inside, then you can do that, okay? And the very last thing that you need to do is sign your beautiful piece of work. You can sign in paint, or you could grab a Sharpie if you have one, and you could sign anywhere on the front of the canvas or on the back of the canvas, whatever you would like. After you've signed, you're done. That's the very last thing an artist does to their painting. I hope you had fun and you have a cute little mermaid painting to hang somewhere in your house now. I'll see you again soon, I hope. Bye. Thank you for watching this online program. Please help Garden City Arts thank these generous sponsors.